peace to you. For he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And with him, so are all who are bound to him in faith forever. The Gospel of St. Luke, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, gives us three scenes from that first Easter day. First, the well-known and very beloved scene at the empty tomb where the women who have come to finish the job of preparing his body for a proper burial, which could not have been completed on that Friday afternoon because that sundown of that day began the Sabbath day, the day of worship and rest. And so it was a hasty burial. But they all thought that they would be able to come back when the Sabbath was over and complete the job of giving Jesus a proper Christian burial. But no. There's nothing proper about the burial of Jesus under than he did accomplish his Sabbath day rest in the tomb so that he might rise again from the dead. Not only as he had foretold, but even as the scriptures of the Old Testament had prophesied. Some directly speaking of the resurrection of the Messiah, some indirectly. As with Daniel in the lion's den. For when Daniel was sealed in what appeared to be his own tomb, with the stone rolled in front of the mouth of the lion's den, they thought there would be no return from that either. But indeed, there was. Also in the book of Daniel, of the stories of those three faithful Christians who were unceremoniously renamed as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, though they were given names by the, their captors, they continued to remember who had properly named them in his gracious calling of them from eternity and that they were delivered from the fiery furnace even with the presence of the Son of God with them and they emerged unsinged, unharmed, fully alive. And on this day, both on that road to Emmaus and then later when Jesus appears to all of his disciples back in Jerusalem. He opens up their minds and their hearts that they might understand the scriptures. That the whole Bible is first and foremost about him. In the book of Moses, that is to say the first five books of the Old Testament. In the books of the prophets. And even in the Psalms and the other wisdom literature, as it's called in the Old Testament. Every single book 
of the Old Testament Bible, which was all that existed at that time on the day of Jesus' resurrection, was about him. Because it is God's love story, not only for his son, whom he appoints to be the savior of the world, whom he has sent to accomplish all that he has now fulfilled with his resurrection from the dead. But it's also his love story about his love for you. Yes, it must be thus. As the angels and Jesus tell his disciples that it had to be this way because this was God's way of demonstrating a boundless and everlasting love for you. A true and passionate love. Not in the way that we think of love in worldly terms a true love that would have such a one lay down his life. God laying down his life for you. God becoming man for God cannot die even as Jesus demonstrates to his disciples I'm like you. I have flesh and bones. A spirit does not. Let me have some fish, some honeycomb, and I'll show you. Touch me. Feel me. Believe in me. That he had become fully human, this son of God, that he might live a human life and perfectly before God. That's one of the ways in which the scriptures testify of Jesus. That every command that is given to man to fulfill, to please God, to fulfill God's commandments, that's what Jesus has accomplished for you all. And then that he might shoulder the burden of our sin. He takes it all upon himself and into himself. This is his entire earthly suffering. All of the consequences of all of our sins. This is why he looks differently after his resurrection. Because before that he is shouldering the burden, bearing the crushing load, experiencing all that we experience in this fallen world. Sickness and injury and heartache, all the misery. And yet, doing so faithfully, without whining, without grumbling, without complaint, knowing that it must be thus, and praying to his Father, thy will be done, if it must be thus, Heavenly Father. And then dying for that sin to put it to death. Your sins are dead to God. And really, they should be dead to you as well. The best Easter gift that you can give to yourself is to believe that truth. It doesn't matter how large. It doesn't matter how consequential it was to your life in the here and now. 
Stop trying to bear the guilt and the shame for it because it is dead. And you are forgiven. That's the proclamation of Easter. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is his holy absolution of you, of each and every one of his faithful ones who believes that word. It's why the scriptures speak of it, of his resurrection, as being for our justification. That we are declared just and holy by God in his sight, perfectly righteous. Because of what Jesus has done for you, and because you believe it is done for you. And now, like Jesus, you emerge on Easter morning looking different. Yes, he was no longer bearing the consequences of sin in his body. He now looks like he will look forevermore. Maybe like that. Art artistic depiction. But whatever it is, whatever his appearance, you will know him. Because you already know him by faith. It's how the disciples finally recognized him. They had just seen him on that prior Friday. Of course, it was a very gruesome picture as he hung bleeding and dying upon the cross. But even in all the time that he had spent with them in those three plus years of wandering around Judea and Galilee and the surrounding regions, now he looks different because he is. He's victorious. He's triumphant. He's eternal. And so are you. This is what Easter means for you. The rest of the Holy Scriptures, the, those which are written after that first Holy Easter, are likewise, as Jesus says, about him. But they're also about you. About how you will now live with this Jesus ever living in you. Raised to new and eternal life. That's not just Jesus. That's you in whom he lives. For he is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia, and so are you in whom he lives. Now you get to complete your love story that God has written large in the holy blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who has written your name in his book of life. So that you might know, believe, and trust with all your heart that Easter has changed your life. And while we may look little different on the outside, being wholly cleansed by this precious word of forgiveness, you are cleansed and holy on the inside. The waters of holy baptism flowing into you and becoming a living water that carries you along in the flow of your life of faithfulness and love before God. 
these words ringing out in your ears. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And you echoing in your own heart and mind. And with him so am I. Together, we continue this journey through this life knowing that Jesus has responded to our invitation to him to abide with us, to provide us with the fullness of his blessings, that for which we need and implore his graces for life in the spirit, but continuing to provide the bread for which we pray daily, our daily bread, and he responds with a banquet of blessings like we enjoyed in our breakfast this day and that we will enjoy within our households on the remainder of this day and all the days of our life, trusting that he will provide for everything that we need, for so he loves us. Love him and neighbor likewise. For he is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia, and with him so are you. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.